Now we have the official closing of this 11th edition of the International Congress of Spectrum. Bueno, en el día de hoy hemos tenido una jornada muy productiva. Muy Thank you. Today we have had a very productive session, a very demanding. We have uh, numerous contributions uh, on part of um, experts, uh, national and international experts. As you can see in your screen, we have a, had a participation uh, big about technical discussions related to spectrum. We had 10 national speakers, 28 international speakers, over 1,000 persons that registered and over 700 30 persons attended the Congress, and in each presentation, during each discussion, we had on average 280 persons attended. So that shows really the big interest that exists in this uh, topic so relevant today, especially when we are talking about digital transformation, where the spectrum is essential. It is an enabler. That's why uh, I must say that it's important to work on a cooperative basis, to work as a team for the construction of the country that we need. As we have said before, we are ending here uh, after discussing very important relevant topics uh, for the country and the region. Besides that, we are happy with the, uh, the welcoming given to this event, with the amount of speakers and the number of persons that registered and participated actually, uh, or attended this event. <laughs> Let's remember that uh, during the opening of the event, uh, the Minister of ICT gave us the welcoming to the panelists, to the guests in general. But in addition to that, we received an invitation to participate in the consultations that this, that is that the ministry have opened for comments, in particular the draft project for spectrum ceilings. And later on, with the participation of the radio communications officer, ITU Mario Manevich, he presented us with the topic, what can we do for spectrum? There, we mentioned aspects to be considered when it comes to spectrum management, both national and regional. Topics such as uh, policy for spectrum regulation of spectrum, international regulation, international standards, permits and license for use of sperm spectrum, uh, asking for a comprehensive approach, considering the environmental impact. But there are important challenges, challenges that for all of us are quite relevant. Let's work in pro-connectivity. Let's work in pro-social inclusion for sustainability. And we were we heard the spectrum must be as located fairly and suitably. There are many services that demand spectrum in each band. And that's why we need to look at everything that is happening um, in the complete uh, ecosystem on a holistic manner. Now, after that came the ANE, we took advantage of that to say that during the past three years, ANE has carried out different projects aiming at increasing the availability of spectrum to diminish the compensation for, you know, and to treat fairly all stakeholders in the market. And this is part of 11 projects, some of them completed, some of them are still ongoing. We presented the policy for spectrum 2020 to 2024 and the roadmap for the next 25 years materialized, among other things, with the proposal of the master plan for spectrum management. The topic of spectrum for verticals and future allocations was treated in the second panel. We saw use cases for verticals, 5G, like the case that Canada show us in farming. And take advantage of local licensing and automation through the access of the spectrum and also progress made in Brazil and the United Kingdom. Now then, 
in the mega constellations panel, that is satellite, we were accompanied by four companies that were deploying their satellite system. We can highlight from the other following. First of all, that type of systems are designed to look for global coverage and that way provide services to places where coverage under land or traditional systems are non-existent. Number two, they mentioned that this deployment can aid of over 3,000 satellites <coughs> that can be made gradually and in different orbits. We also heard that this type of things allow to the, the, the facilitate the deployment of 5G, whether in complementary centers or under the non-interference and sharing with 5G. In respect to initiatives such as Open RAM, we saw that this allowed to materialize open ecosystems and serve to promote the participation and cooperation of multiple competitors. Besides, it's not an idea because there are already implementations of that in Colombia. But still, there are challenges such as the interoperability of multiple operators, the remote business model allowing to monetize this technology and reach high levels of reliability in the provision of the service. From another point of view, in respect to the agenda for the World Telecommunications Conference that ITU is organizing for 2023, the president of the preparation group presented us with the progress made in preparation for this conference. So, yeah, such progress is the expression of the preliminary views with countries without proposing a specific solution, uh, manifest their opinion about certain needs of, uh, um, uh, according to their own uh, interests. On the other hand, in the rural connectivity panel and reduction of digital divide, we saw the importance of carrying on additional efforts to reach remote and rural areas. We also saw that we are living in an historical moment where multiple technologies are con consolidated. And more than ever, we need to eliminate the barrier between the rural and the urban. How dynamic access can help to create a much broader ecosystem requiring greater more investment. Different models that support are supported with cooperation with big players of the industry. In the talk about monitoring, the French agency, uh, reg French regulator, show us the fact that interference, intentional or not, represent a threat for all stakeholders of the economy and the state. INFR have received over 1,500 complaints about interference in 2020 and expect that this number is greater for 2021. This on account that there are more uses of spectrum, there are more services that require spectrum, there's more penetration of radio telecommunications in general. Therefore, expectations of more interference and more work required to control. In response to interference, the French regulated carry out the following activities. Intervention in the case of breach of use, preventative control and corrective control, uh, use of uh, fixed mobile stations that support supported by a centralized database. Innovation and continuous training on modernization and perspective analysis. On the other hand, the issue of national research, the radio signal for 5G and human health, the analysis carried out by national universities in a project was shown here. And the final panel of this Congress deal with the topic of the role of spectrum within the framework of digital transformation in Colombia. There it was said that the spectrum is the strategic input, a neighbor of the value chain of the and it is an enabler for digital transformation and promotes the economic reactivation of the country, promotes digital transformation, and the implementation of emerging technologies to increase productivity of SMEs, for instance, uh, across the region. But 
let's consider that there a series of challenges were proposed like innovation and we need to innovate in many ways we need to innovate in productivity but also innovate in the way spectrum is managed and the way it is allocated we need to develop new ways or innovative ways of allocating the spectrum allowing at the same time to implement solutions to expand connectivity reduce and as much as possible to eliminate the digital digital divide to meet the goals that man, dr manuel explained to us in the very beginning of the morning and to end i want to thank on my behalf and also as director of national agency spectrum colombia i want to thank the minister for ict in colombia Dr. Carmelija Valderrama, and to the representatives of regulators from Brazil, Canada, Germany, France, United Kingdom, to the panelists, to the speakers, and to national and international organizations that have participated in this very important event. The list is long. Apologies to those that I did not mention. Technology operators, ICTs, uh, academia, and industry and other productive sectors. I want to thank as well the hard work of our entire team in the ANE in order to carry out this important event for the benefit of the entire country. RTVC and public media, the radio and television of Colombia, to the participants in attendance of production, camera operators, all of them that make possible this event, this 11th edition International Congress of Spectrum, a neighbor of development and competitiveness. Finally, I want to thank our national and international audience that exceeded 730 participants in a virtual mode from different parts of the world. Many thanks to you all. And from now, at this very moment, you are invited to participate in the 12th edition in 2022, uh, this International Congress of Spectrum. Thanks a lot.